Welcome back, folks. I'm Patrick with Light Source Engraving, your host as usual. And today I have another episode for you. And this one is evol revolving around patches. Again, however, this one isn't about engraving the patches or pressing the patches. And I think this one will benefit a lot of folks. If you cut out your own patches and you're looking to get that stitched look. So here's the patch that we have that is fact that is a JDS patch. And of course it has real stitching on it. And if you're wanting to get that stitched look, well, how do you create that? So here is the patch that I cut out that has the stitched look on the patch. Well, we can do it in two ways. One is with Adobe Illustrator, two is within Lightburn. I'm gonna show you both of them. And I'm also gonna give you the file for the three inch by two inch patch so that you can just download it and immediately get to work on creating your own stitched look patch, or you can follow the tutorial and make your own. And you can do it with any shape that you can think of. And I'm gonna show you how right now. So. Thank you for my patrons for allowing me to purchase all these supplies to do all this testing and make this stuff for you. I greatly appreciate them more than I could possibly express, but thank you very much. And thanks for tuning in. So without any more fluff and filler, let's just jump right into the software and get started. All right, we're gonna start off in Adobe Illustrator and I already have my example patch laid out here for you. So how do we make this? The first thing we want to do is make a rounded rectangle. So let's just go ahead and make our rectangle. You can make the radius whatever you desire. Then I'm just going to go up here to transform and unlock the aspect ratio. And three inches is approximately 76 millimeters. And two inches is approximately 51 millimeters. So we'll just go with that. And then we'll select our selection tool. We have our path selected. Now we're gonna to go to object. And then let's go to path, offset path. Let's offset it three millimeters and we'll create ourselves another path here that is offset and you can see there. And if you see how these are corners, what we can do is just re redo that and go to object, path, offset path, and we want our joins to be round. So make sure you select round. And then that'll show up rounded once we get to next step. So select both of your lines and let's bring them off of the white space. Just want to make sure we don't have any fill there. Then we can select our inner line. And if you're not happy with that radius, which uh, I wasn't, I'm going to give it a little bit of uh, more of a curve. Then we're going to go to our stroke menu up here. And the first thing we want to do is make it round and round. Then we're going to check our dashed line box. And with the dashed line box, you can see the live preview, what it's doing. This was from, uh, not from my previous settings. Uh, yeah, it was. I used two and two, so it's close to 1.985. So it's a two millimeter dash with a, almost a two millimeter gap. So we click off that and you can take a look and see what it looks like. And then you can adjust how these appear around the corners just by going back into your stroke menu and selecting whether you want it centered on the corners or offset. I chose centered last time. It uh, gave a nice look. And then again, we wanna make sure we have round and round set for our cap and corner. And then we can zoom in and take a look and those are round and round. And that's it, it's just that easy. We can do object, 
expand appearance, object expand by fill and stroke. And then at this point, you can actually copy this. Let me bring Lightburn over here and paste it right into Lightburn. So let me ungroup it. Then I'm going to select the outer line and make it our cut line. And there you go. It's just that simple, ready to go if you have Adobe Illustrator. And then you can get started working on the rest of your design. If you don't have Adobe Illustrator and you want to use Lightburn, we have to do a similar process. However, this one's a little more involved. So I'm going to hide the red and then group these so they're all together. And I'm just going to make them a different color so we can hide them. All right, we have our red line again. So this is our cut line. And I'm not going to redo the cut line because uh, we didn't make it in Illustrator. However, when we copied and pasted, it didn't paste in at the correct size. So I just want to make that width 76. And height is at 51, so that is good to go. Now we do want to offset this. Uh, let's see, we're going to offset it inward. We want round. And our offset distance is going to be negative three. And you can make this, or, or just inward, three. And you can make this whatever size you like, uh, as far as how far you want your offset to be. All right, and now we have our path. Now we need to create our own little stitch marks. So first thing we want to do is just make a rectangle. And it came in at a different layer. I'm just going to make it red for now. And we want to give this a radius, but we want to first set it to what size we want it to be. In our previous example from Illustrator, we had a height of two millimeter and a width of two millimeter. Now that we have the correct size, oops, let me unlock the aspect ratio again, two. Not 20, two. Sorry, the list was three. There we go. Now we're at a rectangle. Let's go with that, three and two. Now we can go to our shape properties and give it a radius. And then if we don't like how this is looking, uh, I'm sorry, our height was one millimeter. Let's unlock this and change the height to one and make our width two. if we like that. Yep, I think I like it better at three. So now we have our little stitch mark. We need to go to node, edit mode, and we're looking for the big green node and right there it is. There's the big green node. So what we want to do is, th is take our stitch mark and snap it to the corner. So right there, it's snapped right to the corner to the big green node. It's not showing where that node is, but we know it is at that corner. All right, so first thing we want to do is select the object that we want to copy and then shift click and select the path that we want it to copy along and then go to your arrange menu, copy along path, and then you'll see right now it has four copies in the space between. If we want to change that, we can let's see. Let's go to just keep clicking until it looks about how you want it. Let's say we want 46 and that puts one copy exactly on our corner on each corner. So then you can hit OK. And now we can get rid of our line here. We do not need that anymore. Let's get rid of our path. 
And then what we want to do is fix these corners. So let's say we want to put it at a 45 degree angle. You can do shift and your uh, comma key. And then we can move that and make it look a little more rounded. And then with these, we just want to hit our comma key and make those vertical. So just go through and rotate those 90 degrees. Click each one to rotate. I'm going to rotate all these first. Now for this one, we just want to do shift and click, shift and click or comma. The comma made it the wrong way, so we can just go two more times and shift click a comma. To get it to rotate the right way, you just hit the period button. And then we can just move these into position, just going to eyeball them and have them look in approximately where they should be. And right there you go, we have our stitch marks made in Lightburn. And again, I just eyeballed these. They could obviously be arranged a little more symmetrical, but sometimes stitching isn't symmetrical. So just go with what you like. So there's our Lightburn version. And then let's go back to Illustrator. Then we'll control C and go back to Lightburn. Then I'm going to paste this in here, select it, and resize it to 76. Put it above so we can get a good look. Select it again. I mean, unselect it, ungroup it. Select the outer one. I'm going to make it red. And you can see we have two different looks. All I have to do is make these a little bit smaller and we could have more closely approximated what we created in Illustrator. However, all you have to do is just run through that process again real quick with a smaller stitch mark and you can make the exact same, pretty much the exact same stitch mark in Lightburn without having to use Adobe Illustrator. Now, if I want to make all of these black so we can compare, we'll just select them all. Let's put them on the black layer. And there we go. So we have two different versions of the same general stitching outline on the patches. And it's just that simple. All right, so what I'm gonna do is save this file for you guys and put a link in the description so you can download this and you'll have it for yourself. And I might just go ahead and do another one that has the stitch marks a little smaller, more closely approximating the Adobe Illustrator version. And then you can try them both out and figure out which one you like the best. But that's going to be it for our software part of this tutorial. And now I'll just come back here to the main camera and say goodbye. That's it. I hope this helps you out at least. And you can use this to copy any object along a path in Lightburn. Don't just use it for stitching. You can use it to copy stars around a circle. Uh, Rich did a video, LA Hobby Guy, where he copied stars along a path. So check that video out and you'll have an additional reference to take a look at when you're doing the copy along a path procedure in Lightburn. But that's it for today. Thanks for my patrons. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I really appreciate the likes and the subscribes. Uh, you can even hit the bell, turn on notifications so you know when I release a new video or go live. I like to do live unboxings, so you'll see those drop up from time to time. And uh, thanks again to everyone who made it this far. I greatly appreciate you watching the video, and I hope you have a great night. Thank you very much. We'll see you in the next one.